Hey guys, Tiago with PC World here. Today, we're gonna talk about the high-end desktop as it pertains to motherboards. Have motherboards in the mainstream CPU lineup, such as Intel's Z690, AMD's X570, have mainstream motherboards caught up in enough features and performance to be able to justify fully moving for most users to the mainstream platforms, or is there gonna be a large gap, a lot of users not satisfied with what's currently going on, something that traditionally was only fulfilled by things such as Threadripper or Intel's X-Core platform. So let's get started. So let's do just a brief history as to why the mainstream CPUs have replaced what used to be very high core count and expensive CPUs for users in the past. Let's go back to around the time of Intel's X99 platform. You guys will remember that had the 6950X 10 core processor, used to be a mighty $2,000. So that was when CPUs were outrageously expensive for not really that high core count. Of course, nowadays you can get considerably faster CPUs for much cheaper. First, probably less importantly, that really was the high-end gaming desktop for a lot of people. Anytime you saw some of the most over-the-top gaming builds, not workstation, most likely they had an X99 platform. Even though Intel's mainstream lineups such as Z170, Z270, those really were the ones that were geared towards specifically gaming. The second, and this is probably definitely going to be more important, would be the users using it for workstation use. Generally, you're going to be able to get a lot faster multi-core CPUs, especially back then, something like the 6950X was expensive, but a 10-core CPU back during that time was certainly a lot more impressive than it would be now. So for workstation use, you're going to have more of those multi-core CPUs available on these high-end desktops. And then, of course, they're also going to have basically what are the two other more important elements. That's going to be more PCIe lanes than the mainstream desktops for users using workstations with, back then, multiple GPUs. Now it could be a capture card or a lot of NVMe drives. And also, memory support is very important as time went by and definitely thanks to AMD's Ryzen, which brought many multi-core CPU at much more reasonable prices, we finally reached a point where something like AMD's Ryzen 9 5950X, which with its 16 cores and 32 threads, was able to generally beat something from Intel's X-Core lineup, something like the 10980XC. So mainstream CPUs, especially with the advent of these Ryzen 9 processors, certainly started to become very attractive for most users. Not only that, for gamers, the market completely disappeared for the high-end desktop. Now, with AMD's Ryzen and even Intel's Z690 platforms, such as the 12900K, you get great multi-threaded performance and really great single core speeds that are going to be very important for gaming. And of course, this goes without saying that typically mainstream CPUs also come at much better pricing, something like a Threadripper will be well over $1,000. And another big reason for the demise of HEDT, during during the last several years with massive chip shortages, it makes sense for a lot of these companies to focus either on the mainstream lineup like Z690, X570, or on the more lucrative and very high-end market like Epic and Xeon CPUs. So those users in the middle that needed workstations with a certain amount of memory or PCIe lane, you really got stuck sort of choosing between both of them. And we know that even something that was pretty popular with most people, such as Threadripper, has basically disappeared from the market if you search yourself or recently Puget Systems sort of analyzed what's going on with their sales in terms of workstations and they said that even them have had a very hard time actually acquiring these Threadripper CPUs. Therefore people either have to go to the extreme high end like the server class CPUs or make do with the current mainstream lineup. But recently we have seen some sightings of Threadripper Pro 5000 that's supposedly going to be released. First you'll see it in some workstations like from Dell and Lenovo and we don't know if that's going to be released into the wider do-it-yourself market aside from these couple of system builders. Let's see specifically with motherboards what features are available on the mainstream compared to what would be available on a high-end platform and we'll see if that's going to be enough for certain users and which users may actually be left out in the dark. Let's say if we take one of the more modern mainstream motherboards something like a Z690 A70 
thesis extreme. Now, off the bat, if we ask the question, has this motherboard caught up to HEDT motherboards? It's a little bit misleading because first, this is gonna have some technology that was never even existent on the older motherboards. So let's address some of the important differences. First is gonna be the RAM. While DDR5 is definitely the bleeding edge and it's gonna be great for gaming and many applications, definitely a lot of diminishing returns and in general, you're not going to get the same capacity capability as with something like DDR4 that's been around much longer. Certainly a lot more stable in terms of workstation use as well. Primarily, users are going to be looking at that limit. With most mainstream platforms like Z690 and X570, you're going to be limited to maybe like 128 gigabytes of RAM, which is certainly enough for a gaming build and even most workstations, but some users may need significantly more RAM. And of course, things like ECC memory, things that are generally not going to be found on the consumer grade mainstream desktops may certainly be more important for certain workstation users and it's going to take precedence over any newer technology that may be available on those motherboards and of course the list of advantages on the high-end desktop certainly don't stop there for example most of them will have eight dim slots allowing you to have that quad channel memory while most of the sort of mainstream platforms are just going to have dual channel memory even with improved mainstream ram capabilities you still need need something like a Threadripper without, of course, going to Xeon or Epic, which you can push it even further. And much like the RAM capability, we mentioned the CPU history and how it's evolved over time that most users are fine with the mainstream platform, but some users who need maybe 34 or 64 cores or more, such as available on the Threadripper platform, it's not even going to be a question for them to go on the mainstream platform. They simply need that core count for their specific workload, where something like a 5950X is just not going to cut it with 16 core 32 thread. Even a 12900K with its very high performing single core speeds, definitely not going to be enough for that user if they rely for their workflow for something like 32, 64 cores. So that'll certainly be a very easy criteria for a user to be able to decide which platform is certainly going to be best. Another vital area where mainstream motherboards have not exactly caught up with sort of Threadripper and the older HEDT platforms that's going to be in PCIe lanes. Now, these are vitally important and of course running SLI, nobody does that anymore for gaming aside from some very specific uh, benchmarks and things of that nature, but a lot of users do use multi-GPU, sometimes even four GPUs for workstation uses, things like machine learning, AI, there's various things, even video rendering, things like DaVinci Resolve certainly will scale with multiple GPUs and it typically a mainstream mother board will be able to do maybe two but the PCIe lanes are going to be a lot more limited with something like Threadripper you're able to go with as many as 88 PCIe lanes even more on the Threadripper Pro lineup of CPUs and it's also going to leave you plenty of room for different capture cards various PCIe cards even PCIe NVMe RAID cards if you need a lot of fast storage and of course those boards typically will have a lot of NVMe drives as well even if things aren't generation 5 having more PCIe lanes, even at generation four, like Threadripper offers for PCIe, that's going to be vitally more important because then you're not going to be limited by the amount of things that you can connect to the motherboard. So for those users that really need those PCIe lanes, especially to get the full performance from each of those lanes, things like Threadripper are really going to be the only alternative. So those are going to be some of the vital areas that are going to be important for a certain class of users who it's not enough to go to mainstream because you're going to be limited by limitations like as memory, PCIe lanes, even the core count on certain CPUs, as good as mainstream is now, it certainly is not going to fulfill that same level as something like a Threadripper or even the previous X-Core processors would. Now, without having to go to the Epic and Xeon processors, which are going to get much more expensive, it's going to be a completely different platform. To answer the question of the video, in some regards, mainstream platforms for most users have even surpassed HEDT, but there certainly is one huge caveat. For some of the traditional workstation users that definitely need much more than mainstream can offer, the answer will be no, it really hasn't even come close to fulfilling some of those necessities that sort of the HEDT used to give a lot of those users. So those users definitely have a pretty tough choice. You either stay on mainstream with some limitations, try to find whatever is left of Threadripper products if you need it now, or maybe wait for the new ones that are coming out, which may still be hard to source, or if it's really mission critical, you may just have to step up to the much more expensive server line platform.
platforms. All right, guys, let us know what you think down below. Are you one of those users that just need a workstation like a Threadripper level in order to get your work done? Let us know what you think. Remember to subscribe for more videos like this, and we'll see you guys on the next video.